<laughs> Welcome back to Rolling Out with the Crush. I'm Tab Turner, joined by my co host Mr. Emmanuel Blaze and Macy O'Hurd. And we've got an NFL legend in the house with us today, Mr. Jamie Dukes. Good to be here. Good to have you. How are you feeling? You look fantastic today. Thank you. I'm the only one who decided to dress up. Anyways, um, <laughs> just kidding. He didn't get the memo. <laughs> Or oh, we didn't read it, Ashley. Before I had that time, Jamie, she was chilling. Now she comes in. Yeah. She fancied us, Jamie. Don't know about it. Don't know about Now we fancy. I guess show one, we didn't need it. But show two, we didn't need it, right? Yeah. But we have company. I'm sorry. Uh, well, anyways, decorated Hall of Fame FSU player. You played for the Falcons for 10 years. Played for Green Bay, Arizona. But you went undrafted coming out of college. What does that say, or what can you tell college players now who want to get into the league? Like, what... Does it take as far as hard work? What did you go through? Well, I think it, it's the same thing with, with everybody. It's not just sports, it's just in general in life. You know, I mean, why are we here? These cats right here come get a show on TV. That's all right. You know what? <laughs> I got knowledge. I know what I want to do. I'll make my own future. <laughs> That's kind of the road that I took. Exactly. Is exactly. that, you know, I realized, you know, because I was a four time All American in college and played against the best of the best. And there were 12 rounds. Yeah, right. When yeah, I was right. coming out, but but because I was short, mm -hmm. that was the reason why um, I didn't get drafted. So, but at the same time, just like anything else, I I could never let somebody define me. You know, you're here today because you won't let somebody define you. You're not a basketball player. You know, I heard your jump shot was a little suspect, but that's okay. No, he I heard you good to paint. I heard you really good to paint. The jump shot. Was <laughs> so so Jamie, when you when you first touched, when you was a free agent, you walked out there. What was the mindset? You were like, I know I'm better than him, or was it like, I'm not leaving, I'm here now? No, it was, well, I've always, you know, believed in me. I will bet on me in a second, mm, you know, so because I, I, I know I can trust me. Uh, I was always prepared. Uh, I had a great coach, Wayne McDuffie. Uh, he passed away, killed himself. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I talked to his lovely wife, Tony. She's probably watching this now. But, but the point of the matter is that I've always just been confident in me. You know, and I've had people in house, in family, you know, that, you know, a lot of people have doubted me, but I've always believed that I was called to do something. I didn't know what that was, but I knew there was a path to getting there, and then the NFL uh, was part of that path. Now, we talked to Peter Ward, and he just had so many glowing things to say about Bobby Bowden. Yeah. Talk about Bobby Bowden, the man, and how he influenced you. What I loved about Coach Bowden was that, you know, because think about it, we had, when you have a program, sorry for the tech, but when you have a program, um, that, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm sorry, I, Marco Cole was doing, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ryan Stewart, I, I know, you I know right you now, Ryan and Marco, <laughs> Dorsey Levins, what do you they, they're going to be hit me, but no, but, but, but we had a lot of All-Americans coming in every year, right. and, and so Bobby never lied to anybody. Uh, but the genius of Coach Bowden is what Nick Saban is doing right now. Mm. The thing that people don't understand that Nick Saban is doing and why Alabama is so great is, and, and you look at the drafts and it tells a story, but nobody's paying attention to it. It's as simple as this. Bobby was sending 44 people at you every game. He's sending 40, you know, blue chip, four, five-star guys. That's all Nick Saban's doing. Yeah. And so the other teams, you know, Clemson, and they won a national championship, but these other teams that they play, the other SEC teams that they play specifically, you know, they got 22 guys. Right. So, you know, Auburn or LSU's got 31 guys. Right. But this dude is throwing 45, four and five star blue chippers at you. It just wears you down. And Ole Miss and those other schools like Tech and them, they don't stand a chance with, I know they're I'm going to clean this up. <laughs> First of all, we had Calvin Johnson come yeah. out of Tech. Demarius Thomas, oh, yeah. Thomas, Morgan Burnett, uh, yeah. Mike Johnson. Yes. We have a lot Great of people way. that came out that of tech, fun. and that's just. <laughs> <laughs> We've had seven, twelve in a draft. Know what? I'm gonna go to the next question. Well, at least we smoke. Brilliant. To their credit, no liberal arts. That's the reason why they have no liberal arts classes. So that's why it is so difficult to recruit. To to recruit. I you know. Really yeah, yeah. Everybody's that. business or LCC yeah. who plays sports. Right, I think right. That's only me with an engineering struggle. Right. Anyways, um, so you decided to stick around with football. Yes. Um, that that's obviously a passion of yours. You've mm -hmm. done some analyst 
and uh, contribution work for NFL Network. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and all the things that you've done to stick around sport football. Ten is my number. Ten is my number, you know. 64 was my number I wore. I wore in 73. Yeah. Played 10 years in the NFL. Played mm -hmm. 10 years. I worked 10 years for NFL Network. Um, and so it was a great run. Um, being able to be there and commuted to L.A. for 10 years. ESPN was actually offering him more money. Dion and I, we've known each other since he was 17. Uh, we've been great friends, brothers uh, for a long time. And so, you know, we were talking through the whole process. And he said it was something that his spirit was just driving him to the NFL Network. And the way things work in sports, if you don't have a ring, championship ring, very, very difficult. Look at how many analysts mm -hmm. you see, 95 to 98% of them yeah. have rings. Exactly. And, it, and that number is lower now. So for me at that time, it was me, Lomas Brown, and maybe two or three others, I'm sure, of all the analysts on all the networks. But the point was that Dion took the job, said, hey, look, man, I got a guy better than anybody you got. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, the executive producer, Eric Weinberger, you know, kind of, you know, traditionally a <laughs> yeah, football guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then... Right after Dion signed his deal, he said, look, he said, look, I'm telling you, give a guy a look. And I was working for Comcast Media One, Matt Stewart, uh, you yeah. know, Bob Rafton, my man Bob, yeah. you know, doing hey, things. So, so for me, I trained in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So when, when I hit the stage, you know, because these guys, are, you know, it, it takes time. You know, you're working on your craft now. I mean, not that you aren't polished already, <laughs> but you know you are growing, and Bob is doing a great job of mentoring you and others. And so, but I was polished. So by the time I got there, and especially with my radio background, that's the thing I always tell people about getting into television. The best thing that helped me was the radio okay. because it's so fast. Right. It, it's, it's pace, 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 pace. So now when I got on television, I could say a whole lot that meant something in a short period of time as opposed to, yeah, um, <laughs> and that was a great catch. <laughs> as far as play by play, that, yeah, that, that was a okay. great catch yes. by Assassin's Johnson. <laughs> Not Assassin's. <laughs> Let me ask you this though: When did you start transitioning to the next phase? You seem like you keep doing that. You went from, from football going to analyst radio, then from radio to TV, and now from TV to what you're doing now. How soon, or when did you start making? It, it's about in my, it's, 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 uh, God has ordered my steps. You know, I joke and talk a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, a little pitchy, yeah, yeah, a little pitchy though, but yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, it just in my spirit, you know, He planted the transition. You know, how we got to Drip Fusion and Pro IV was simple. From, um, you know. We have a foundation, Put Up Your Dukes Foundation. What we do, we've done a lot of work in the community. We probably put a half a million dollars at least into over the over six, seven or eight years of recreation center exercise programs, the partnership with the city of Atlanta, DeKalb County, so on and so forth, programming in that way, uh, nurses, and uh, all kinds of different things. We're gonna be starting to infuse uh, seniors for free here soon as well. And so uh, my board of directors part, uh, member, one of them, uh, Jared Huey, um, is an anesthesiologist by trade. And uh, he has an incredible company called uh, Concordia Anesthesiology where they manage anesthesiology for hospitals all over the world. And so he was talking about, they were getting ready to get into a different part of his business, or, or excuse me, an expanded role in his business, uh, looking at treating what they call refractory depression. And basically what refractory depression is, is people who are pharmacologically averse to medication, Prozac, and there's about 800 medications, maybe not that many, but a lot of medications right. out there that treat depression. But when it doesn't work for all, all medications fail, they use the old electroshock therapy that we used to see as a kid. <laughs> and that's the only thing that has worked with people. And so what it basically does, the electroshock therapy resets the brain. Now it also causes a seizure <laughs> most times because the volts going through you. Yeah. And so what he was looking at was trying to find a more humane way to kind of treat that area. And it fit right into his face because it was, it was done intravenously. Long story short, um, we started talking and he said some of the uh, individuals that were dealing with the severe depression with the research they were doing with some of the drugs they were using uh, were um, dealing with those symptoms because of concussive type symptoms from a car accident. And that's what got my attention because of all the stuff we do, we've done with retired players and things of that nature. So 
that's kind of how we got started. We realized that we needed money for research, uh, so we developed a, a, a line of infusions, uh, ther or a therapeutic line of infusions, hydration for men and women, uh, hormone support, a uh, passion product for men and women, uh, a menopause product. Notice I stayed in my head this way when I said the <laughs> menopause product. A uh, weight loss product. Uh, even for the folks that hang out a little bit, we have a nightlife relief product. Uh, or excuse me. Uh, 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 you know, so, or, or drug. So, so, so the, the point was that the goal was we knew we had to generate revenue for research. And so that's kind of what we did. And then it led us down the path of Pro-IV and our chronic pain therapy that everybody's kind of starting to talk about now. Jamie, you, one of my favorite fat, well, my favorite fat of all time is Andre Rising. Yeah. You always, whenever people want to kind of sweep Dre under the rug, you always remind people that Dre was that guy. Oh, no, Dre was that guy. Dre was, Dre, there's no question, Dre was that guy. And it's so funny, I did an interview, uh, what was I talking to the other day, but, but, uh, you know, and talking about, oh, it was NFL Films. So talking about they're gonna do some on the night, the 91 Falcons and Hammer and all that other kind of stuff. And and I was telling the story, Dre was that guy, but Dre was also that guy. Right. So, <laughs> so we never ran plays for Andre. Well, we did until Jerry found out Andre was hanging out in the club oh. night before the game from time to time. <laughs> And then we stopped calling plays for Dre, and it didn't matter. Dre was still catching 100 balls. Right, they That's said why he's that guy. Like, That's why he's that, that guy. guy. He's that guy. Yeah. Like, but you're going to run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dre, what Dre, Dre just said, look, if y'all ain't throwing to me, you don't want to win. I'll take that guy. Give me one of them type dudes all day. And it's funny you said it because it was a conversation you guys had on the network, and you, and you specifically said, listen, don't discredit Andre Rising. Take away what he did off the field. Between the white line, he was the guy. But he, but the, the thing about it, you know, we talked earlier about baggage and things of that nature. See, that's one of those things. Andre Risen's a Hall of Fame player, yeah. but he don't have the numbers. And, and that's why, because when you have that kind of lifestyle, and Dre, hey, live it, live it, but that lifestyle also takes from me. My wife told me, you know, if you, you didn't hang out like you did, you didn't know me when I was hanging out. But she, but she, she, but, but, no, but she, but she knew, she knew. And, and you know, I, could, I played 10, I might have been able to play 13, 14, because I was getting it in. I was getting it in, I'm honest, I'm transparent with that one. I know, mm -hmm. just make sure you're, whenever you say the one in comments, you turn that I did, I did, I did. And when I say yeah. lovely and vivacious and intellectual, and like, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you look good in the place. <laughs> Well, I was just going to ask, you know, as a retired football player, I you told us why you got into this. Um, is there any way or what are you guys doing to help current NFL players? Like, who do you work with right now? Well, the, the beauty of kind of what we're doing with Drip Fusion and specifically Pro-IV, I, I wanted to develop. So, so Pro-IV is, uh, the president of Pro-IV is Ray Farmer, who's a former GM of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Ray is an innovator. I mean, you know, you, you hear about these cool tanks and all that stuff that people are getting into. Right, right. He built the largest cryo when he was there in Cleveland. He's a research guy, he's a Duke grant. So we wanted somebody, uh, number one, that on, you know, because we got the doctor piece. We got some of the best docs in the world, you know, uh, from that standpoint of the science, but you also needed someone on the other side. You needed players, you know. So we designed Pro-IV originally just for professional athletes, mm -hmm. elite athletes. Uh, and that includes entertainers because what you can't tell me, Beyonce is not an athlete. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, you cannot tell me, you know, she is not an athlete. Adelia, whatever. I mean, you can't tell me they're not athletes. What they have to exert. Yeah. So we created these things, and then we realized, you know, that you know we could also take this and bring this technology uh, to the marketplace for for general people. Uh, and then we, and I have to say, we stumbled onto. Uh, the necessity and the need for our pro IV chronic pain uh, uh, solution uh, because of the opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. And so we've been, you know, things have been moving extremely fast as a result of that. And so we're collecting data, we're doing research, we're doing, uh, we're going to be doing some re research with the University of Utah. Uh, and, and they take those cyclists and, and do the high performance athletes. Mm -hmm. And so we'll look at some of our, our formulations as it pertains to recovery. Um, you know, we have, as I mentioned, Dr. Wilson, she's going to be doing uh, cancer research. Dr. Mark Beatty has done uh, research 
uh, with uh, pre and post surgical procedures as far as uh, lasers and things of that nature. Uh, it was just out in St. Louis yesterday, that's where I got yesterday. Uh, incredibly uh, young doc out in uh, Dr. Eric Naputi. Uh, he has an incredible program and we're gonna be working with the VA uh, uh, you know, out there as well. So you know, it, it's, that's the thing about it. This product, if you think about this solution, these solutions, you know, they're for the world. It, you know, it was one of those things where we made a decision, you're arrogant to try to restrict, restrict what you have found to the area of sports. You have so many people out there. And it wasn't by design. We just, you know, we weren't thinking. But when the epiphany hit us, oh, my God. This is the only, you know, I tell people, we got the only cell phone on the planet. When you go out there and look for a non-opioid, non-steroid, chronic pain therapy, you go look out there. It doesn't exist except for right here. And so uh, it's just a very exciting time. I know we talked about, sorry, just a quick question. I know we talked about earlier, and I think it's important for people to know, when you take these supplements and these these pain pill, uh, pill killers or whatever, yeah, killer, you yeah. put them in your stomach, only a certain percentage reaches yeah. your bloodstream, and that's what makes this product mm -hmm. so much better. Just explain to the viewers yeah. a little bit. Easy enough. So, 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 <laughs> so, so, so just think of it this way, okay? <laughs> All ball players, you've had five or six knee surgeries, amazing surgery done, can't tell a thing. Um, not that I was looking. Um, <laughs> and so you've taken, let's just say responsibly, two ibuprofen in a day, two 800 milligram ibuprofen in a day. Um, so one day that's 1600 milligrams, little math test. Over a four day period, that's 6400 milligrams. We will, our solution, we can put, I'll put one ml of a, a pain, a synthetic pain agent along with our, our uh, micronutrient trace minerals in your vein and it will accomplish that same goal. So you go from 6,400 milligrams of something down to one ml of a certain synthetic. And the beauty of our solution also is that because it's such a low dose, the micronutrients that in, in the trace minerals actually repair the damage which there really is none, mm. of the synthetic. Mm. So that's the design of it all. And again, so imagine now the Zipidor that you're taking, you know, uh, all of these, you know, different, uh, you know, 10,000 milligrams of this. They, a lot of people make a lot of great drugs, but changing the paradigm to lighten the load or right. utilizing the bloodstream, right. that's the new paradigm. And you said it helps doctors as well control. Oh, sure. Well, and the beauty of that is it puts the doctor in control. Right, right now, it's just rampant. From the opioid perspective, it is completely right. out of control. Right. But now, you can't get prescribed something at the, at the quick mark or whatever. <laughs> Doc, you come in the doc's office, his nurse puts that in your arm, yep. you go home, and now there's no more pill. Right. There's no more abuse. There's no more chopping the pill up. You know, because that's what happens all the time. Anytime you have a pill, and, I, and, and let, let me be clear, there is a place for opioids. Right. There really is a place for it. The question, the problem is, they're prescribing it to probably 75% of people being prescribed that don't need they it. Don't, they, they and that's, it. that's the problem with abuse. That, those drugs are great drugs to attack those issues, but they don't need to be abused. And so that's what our solution provides is the opportunity to do that. Let me, let me just change a little bit because somebody mm -hmm. kind of jumped into my question. Yes, okay. yes sir. <laughs> the Glanville years, man. Yes. We yes, have heard yes, about them, and yes. it was so. Mm -hmm. Dion, you yeah, and uh, yeah. the, the, Hammer, the stories that Buckhead bring. Right. <laughs> yeah. Buckhead okay, let me give you Buckhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because, see, everybody blames the foul. Everybody blames Jerry or whatever for getting rid of Brent. Yeah. All right? And I'll just say it like this. Okay, now we're going to. We got two GMs over here. So. We draft Brett Favre, second round pick, from Southern Miss, all right? Our quarterback at the time is Chris Miller, who's a pro bowler, just threw 30 touchdowns and whatever, whatever. Yeah. He's a pro bowler. The Green Bay Packers, Ron Wolf, offers Jerry Glanville and Ken Hirock a first round draft choice for a dude that's on the bench because I got a pro bowl quarterback. Right. 10 out of 10 times, you're sending Brett Favre packing. 
You're sending Brett Sims, Brett Jones, <laughs> Brett whoever packing. If Donovan McNabb is backup, you're sending Donovan. If Tom Brady's the backup, you're sending Tom Brady packing when your starting quarterback is a Pro Bowl quarterback who's 26. 26. So, I, you know, it's so funny we talk about the media and how, you know, and that's why the people telling the stories in the media, that's why in many cases they just don't understand because they will distort a story to say because – 10 out of 10 times you make that trade. Second round pick for a first round pick because Brett never hit the stage. You always see now, like on certain one count, now the dumbest move ever made was Falcon mm-hmm. trade. Sure, sure. Chris Miller at the time. Sure. We'll get back to the Glanville days. Yes, man. yes. They are yes. legendary in Atlanta. Yes, yeah. I know, uh, is it past? What they call it? The, the uh, statue of limitations. Statue of limitations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us what you can about those days, man. It was wild. It was fun. I mean, because you got to remember, uh, during that time too, Neek. This was Neek's town. Yeah. This was Neek's town. Yeah. Okay. This was Neek's town. <laughs> okay. And then the Braves started to come on too. Yeah. So all of everything, you know, I don't believe we'll ever have that confluence. Yeah. Falcons can win the Super Bowl next year, but we won't have the confluence of the energy because the other part of it was Atlanta was looking for an identity. And, and, and we know Atlanta, you know, obviously for African Americans was a great town, That's but funny. not in sports. Right. And so we, for a period of time, kind of had the sports world kind of captivated because you got Dion taking a chopper from practice to go down to a Braves game to play. I mean, that was some <laughs> crazy. Think about that. Dude going to a football play. You see a helicopter land, a Fox 5 chopper or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Helicopter lands to pick up one of the players who's strutting off to the field with his stuff and, and going to get on the helicopter to go downtown to play. That was crazy. Tell Dion to come in here and tell us that story. I'm, I'm dying to hear it. Yeah. It's prime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. That was like the perfect. Because you had Neek. Hang on a second. I, I don't think that's why you wanted to tell that story. I just no. I got the sense there was another mode. Really? You were saying, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Come on, bro. Okay. Okay. The same thing was just because you had the knee. Yeah. Okay. And the nightlife. The oh, nightlife. Did they think it would break y'all up? No, because we all got along. Yeah. We all got along. I mean, if, if Nick was jealous, I wouldn't have known it. I'm sure there might have been some, but but Nick saw another freak come to town. Nick game recognized the game, right? <laughs> So so I and, and and so I think that and in this town it was enough to go around. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> there was a what are you talking about? There was enough clubs and space. This is a this, this there's sixteen time. people here. Well, there was enough go around. I was seven, by the way. Yeah, I'm saying enough. I remember what? Enough <laughs> town space in town for somebody to have this piece and that piece of town. Right? Nothing's changed. Yeah, yeah. no, it's changed. But for the worst. For us. Falcons <laughs> blow this Super Bowl. Oh, man. What happened? The mindset going into 2008, I, I saw what Matt said. You know what? I watched it a couple times. I'm moving on. Yeah. How mental will that be for the Falcons this year? They'll never forget that. That doesn't mean you, you don't move on. Right. That that never goes away. That we the, the Falcons, unfortunately, our Falcons have just replaced the Buffalo Bills for that meltdown that Warren Moon in the past. Because it, that game don't matter anymore because this meltdown happened in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they, they erased all they said. One move like, oh. he, he's so happy, he don't know what to do, man. <laughs> Woo! They they never Atlanta. talk about me blowing the whole game. They go to Atlanta. Man. I forgot about one move that Oh, man. I mean, but, but, but the thing about it, here, here's what I say about the game. And this is what, you know, and I'm going to tell Matt, I've seen him a couple times. And it wasn't the right setting, but when I do see him, I want to tell him this. Because the truth of it is, I just think about it. In that situation, as much as Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and, and all these great quarterbacks love to throw the ball, they would run that ball in that situation. Because they know they because these are game, they're game managers. They're game, you know, these are they're the captain of the team. They're, they're as, as prominent a player as and, and Tom will go back and fight. The OC and the coach say, look here, I saw somebody I didn't like, I handed the ball off. Because he knew we get three points, we're done. Okay. We, they are done. We we get three points, they are done. I know everybody's jumping on to put it on Kyle, but I'm like, man, side guys. No, 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 well, well, the thing, no, but it's not his fault. But see, think about it this way. 
And this is how I say it when people say, I said, all right, Matt Ryan didn't lose the Super Bowl, right? Did he lose the Super Bowl? But who won the Super Bowl for the Patriots? 12. Right. And so that thing I was just talking about, in my opinion, was an opportunity for Matt to have won that game because he usurped the play that was called and recognized, as I know Peyton would have, because I've seen him do it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen Peyton do that. Resist his temptation, see dang, man-to-man coverage where he got baby right there as a touchdown. Uh-uh. Hand that thing <laughs> off. Or Marvin Harrison or somebody else. Hand that thing off. That I've seen him do that. And that's the point to me where, again, Matt is growing as a quarterback. You know, still, yes, yeah, year 10, but he's growing as a quarterback. And now he's evolved. Now you're an MVP. You become the MVP of the league. Now I'll make the call here, player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, we, you know, we'll we discuss this in your office on Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm going to make this call right here. Because right right I'm making $25 million yeah. that way. Do you think they have the pieces to go back to the Super Bowl this year and win? I don't, think, I don't think they get back this year, but they have the pieces. It, it, and, and think of it this way. Um, they played another third of a season. That's why teams don't repeat. Mm. You know, anyway, it's, it's very rare that you have a repeat teams. Two teams go to the Super Bowl back to back. Seattle did it, I think, recently. Yeah, they did. Uh, I'm not sure if New, 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 and New England did it many years ago, yeah. but but it's difficult because that's why I have the utmost respect and jump around a little bit on you with LeBron James in Miami and what they did down there. I saw some numbers where in that four year run, they played a full season in the postseason. Over those four years, mm-hmm. well, that takes a toll out of you, yeah. you know. And, and you know, so, so when you have a thin team already, because the leagues are the league as good as it is, they are thin. You put that extra stress on the body, you know. Somebody come back not in shape because I went to the Super Bowl, kicking it, worrying about contract, all that stuff. Because all it takes is one dude. Hangover. One dude. That's it. All right. Well, Jamie. It was so wonderful having you. Thank you so much for sharing Profusion Pro IV with mm-hmm. us. Um, I'm going to go get mine. What can they find out more? ProIV.net. ProIV.net. You can go out there, ProIV.net, and find out more. And like I said, next time I come on, we're going to actually do infusions live on the yeah. stream. Good vein, right? On the stream. <laughs> I hide my face because it's going to be all kind of ugly. No, we'll get you lit up before. We'll have everybody connected before. <laughs> yeah, and that way, that while the show is going on, <laughs> now we have to not move. <laughs> we have to be very disciplined in our move because there is something in your arm, but we, or maybe we'll infuse before. <laughs> well, for rolling out with the crush, I'm your girl, Tab Turner, Emmanuel Glaze, Maceo Hurd. Thank you again, Mr. Jamie Dukes, for joining us. Thank you, we will see you on Thursday.